Asparagus would end up removing Broly's tail several times because he was afraid Broly could not control himself in the Uzaru transformation and would become too dangerous. Yet due to Broly's unique genetic makeup, and also being the legendary Super Saiyan as well, he would find a way around the need of a tail and blood waves to stimulate the primal Saiyan state. And so, we would be introduced to Broly's Ikari form in Dragon Ball Super Broly. And today, we'll talk about how he was capable of doing this scientifically. Now before we jump right into explaining Broly's Ikari state, we need to establish several points. Kale and Broly are the only two canon legendary Super Saiyans that we have seen in Dragon Ball thus far. We learned that both of them are virtuous and kind-hearted Saiyans, and in both cases, these characteristics benefit them based on Toriyama's requirements of becoming a Super Saiyan. During the Tournament of Power, Kaba would reconfirm the 1,000-year-old legend by saying that Kale may be the legendary Super Saiyan. So whether you're a universe 6 or 7 Saiyan, their lore, or in this case, the rate at which the mutation would alter a Saiyan, resulting in the legend, is true. Kaba will go on to restate what Vegeta spoke about years before during the Frieza saga. Vegeta went on to say how Super Saiyans appear only once every thousand years, and that he had always said it was just a myth. So since both of these universes have the same understanding of the legendary Super Saiyan, the reason why it happens must also be the same. In the movie, early into the fight, we saw how Broly was evolving and adapting as he continued to fight with Vegeta, all the while being in his base form. We saw as Vegeta needed to transform into Super Saiyan to continue having the upper hand. And yet moments later, Vegeta would state how Broly is adapting and learning as he fights. At this point, Vegeta had enough and resorted into his god state marking the first time we'd see him in this form. But not long after that, that's when we would see the first signs of Broly's Ikari state at play. As this is going on, we see that Broly is in fact undergoing a change. He's holding his head, and when we see his face, we can see that much of that pure-hearted, gentle Saiyan was gone, as Broly changed into the human version of an Uzaru, devoid of reason, carrying out nothing but destruction. The concept of the Uzaru, the Great Ape, underlies the entirety of the Saiyan's race attributes as it is their origin. If we look back at all the times that Saiyans have transformed into an Uzaru, none of them have ever emitted an aura color except for the normal white one. Meanwhile, Broly's Ikari state had that unique green aura similar to the legendary Super Saiyan aura we saw coming off of Kale during the Tournament of Power as well as his own later on in the film. So now at this point, regardless of the primary reason that Broly was able to alter how the Uzaru transformation works on him, we can already deduce that his legendary and possibly mutated S cells must be involved here too. Now simply based on the fact that Saiyans and humans can produce children together, we can conclude that they are anatomically similar enough to have most of the same biological reactions happen inside of them as well. And before you're going to argue this idea, let's not forget that it's been deemed impossible to create a hybrid human chimpanzee despite our 1% genetic difference with them. Thus, I can use my understanding of human physiology and science and apply this to the Saiyan race as well. I can assume that most viewers watching consider all genetic mutations as bad ones, causing damage and dysfunction to an organism. But that's not the case actually. Mutations can be benign and even beneficial. To those viewers watching this video with blue eyes or those who can digest dairy products, for example, have these specific traits thanks to mutations. As a general idea, a mutation will alter DNA, which will go on to create proteins that function differently than they normally would. In early Dragon Ball Z, during the Saiyan Saga, Vegeta would state that the Uzaru state is stimulated when the gland found in the Saiyan tail was activated from exposure to over 17 million Xeno units. Now our scientists would eventually learn that in the rarest conditions, because of mutations, individual cells would be able to mimic the same reaction that would otherwise be caused by hormones without any influence of the actual hormone. So in these cases, it wouldn't matter if the gland and subsequently the hormones were removed 
because their job would now be accomplished without them. But from all of the articles that I've read, many would point out hormones like growth hormone, epinephrine, also known as adrenaline, and cortisol being affected by this specific mutation. So I would assume that Saiyans turning into Nuzaru would need a great deal of growth hormone in order to, well, grow. Meanwhile, each cell is able to overexert themselves and provide that boost in strength and power, causing muscular hypertrophy as a result of adrenaline and cortisol. This is nearly identical to what happens when Goku uses the Kaioken technique. While all this information still doesn't answer the entire mystery, since Broly didn't just become a great ape without his tail or blood waves. Instead, we were told that this is going on. Broly was not only able to stimulate his own Uzaru response without the tail and blood waves, but he was able to manipulate it so he wouldn't have to physically transform either. The second key difference could only happen due to one of two reasons. Either it's a direct result of him being the legendary Super Saiyan, which if we were to look through source material about the old Broly, this would happen because of a mutation as well. This is the same reasoning given to us in the Trunks anime comic when talking about the old Broly. And thanks to Herms, we know that Broly's final form, or the legendary state, resembles Super Saiyan Grade 3, but his speed is considered Ultra First Class due to an evolutionary difference. The other variation could be that it's a genetic change called epigenetics, which I speak about in earlier videos. This would allow Broly to willfully wield this form. And in other words, Broly would able to control which traits to turn on and off as he desires. So based on my theory, regardless of the infinitesimal chance that these mutations actually occur, they are possible and the most probable scientific reason behind Broly's Hikari form. Now before we conclude today's video, I wanted to give a huge shout out to anti Man over on Twitter for his aid and expertise with this topic. While I may be a medical student and have earned two higher education degrees, within the science and medical world, I really don't actually know anything. But anyways, click on the link below and follow him on Twitter. Now I want to know your thoughts about my theory. Were you able to understand it, everything? And if you did, do you agree or disagree? Let me know in the comments below so that we can further discuss this. Also, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more detailed ones like this, please subscribe to my channel and let me know in the comments below. Until next time, see ya.